Hello everyone, my name is Aditya and uh, today we'll be looking at how to start-stop OIC instance on a schedule using Visual Builder Studio. Um, not to be confused with Visual Builder Cloud Service, um, that's a totally separate service. So before we get into the console and look at the configurations, let's first take a look at the high-level architecture of the solution. So you have an Oracle Integration Cloud instance within the um, Oracle Service Network. Um, and for the demo sake, let's call the compartment, the uh, OIC compartment where the OIC instance is. Now you want to start and stop this on a schedule. So there are several different ways to achieve this. Um, one of them being using Visual Builder Studio, which we'll be looking at in this video. Uh, so you have a Visual Builder Studio instance, and what we'll be using is the build jobs. Um, so when you instantiate a Visual Builder Studio instance, uh, one of the first steps is to actually configure your OCI credentials. Um, and the reason we need to do this is that um, the Visual Builder Studio will then go ahead and create a VCN um, and a public subnet. Uh, so that whenever you, the build scripts run, they can spin up a VM um, inside this public subnet and um, execute those uh, build scripts. Now, in order for these build scripts running in this public subnet and this Visual Builder Studio compartment to start and stop instances in OIC compartment, um, you could either use REST APIs you could uh, also use uh, OCI CLI. And that's what we're gonna be using in this demo. Um, and, and to do that, you can configure the OCI CLI uh, using the, you know, the OCI signature, um, or the other option is to configure it using what we call an instance principle. Now, if you don't know what an instance principle is, uh, you can search this on YouTube and you know, you'll get plenty of uh, material to understand the concept. Um, but in, in a nutshell, what it means is uh, any instances within the VBS, VBS compartment will have um, a policy to manage OIC instances within the OIC compartment. So now when we run a build job in Visual Builder Studio, it will create a build VM in the public subnet of the VBS compartment. Um, and then within this build VM, the script is written using OCI CLI, um, and then that can then start and stop the integration cloud instance because it has a policy to manage OIC instances within OIC compartment. So let's jump into the console and then I can show how I've configured the Visual Builder Studio build scripts, and uh, we'll look at the instance principle policy as well. Right, so once you log in to your OCI console, the way to reach to Visual Builder Studio is uh, you open the menu, go under OCI Classic Services, um, and then under Platform Services, you'll see Developer. Click that. So in my case, I have an instance. If you don't, create one. Um, and then to open the instance, you can click on the menu and click Access Service Instance. Uh, you could also bookmark this URL so that you don't have to go through the whole uh, OCI console to reach to this place. So once you come into your Visual Builder Studio instance, one of the first steps is to configure the OCI account. Um, and to configure this, you will have to decide on a service account, uh, create a service account, and then um, under that service account user details, you can go ahead and create an API key. Now, once you have the API key created, this is where you can get all the details required for uh, the configuring OCI credentials in Visual Builder Studio. Then keep in mind, you also have to provide a compartment so that VBS uh, can create the necessary uh, networking architecture and the VMs for the build jobs. And um, all of that is clearly mentioned in the documentation. Uh, which you can follow to kind of set that up. Once you have the OCI credentials, 
the next step is to create a build executor template and uh, since within this template we'll be using the OCI CLI so what you need to do is create a template that has um, the OCI CLI within it now once you configure that uh, it's time to write the build scripts so you can come under the build section and click on create job and once you create it you can go to the configure and then directly go to the steps um, and then here in the steps all I have to write is this single line to uh, start or stop uh, the OIC instance there uh, so this command uh, takes in the OSID of the um, of your OIC instance um, and then at the end we also add auth as instance principal so this is your start script with the start and this is your stop script with the stop keyword there now before we go ahead and kind of show you how to run this and uh, schedule this let's talk about one of the most important steps uh, that is to enable instance principal from the VBS compartment to your OIC instance compartment to enable instance principal one of the first steps is to create a dynamic group uh, and this is my dynamic group here and um, what you need to write into that dynamic group is uh, this policy here so all instance compartment ID equal to and then this is the uh, the compartment ID of the VBS compartment so what this would essentially enable is any instance that is created within that compartment would be automatically added to this uh, dynamic group. The second step is after we created the dynamic group, we need to write the policy. Um, and then this is the policy that you need to write. So this would allow that dynamic group to manage integration instances in our OIC compartment. And uh, that's all you need. And now you have the instance principal from the VPS compartment to your OIC compartment. So coming back to the Visual Builder Studio build jobs, now since we have the instance principal set up, uh, if we run the job, then it should start and stop the integration cloud instance. So let me go to the start job. Uh, let me currently show you the state that uh, integration cloud is in. Uh, so right now it's stopped and this is the message that you get when it's stopped and if you go over to the OCI console you can see that it's in an inactive state now let me run the uh, the start job so there we go this has just run now now if I look at the logs then you will see that it just ran the CI CLI command to start uh, this particular instance. And if we go back to the OCI page, and if I refresh this, then there you see that it is active. And if I go to the integration cloud and uh, try to hit the page, then the home page will load um, successfully. So now coming back to Visual Builder Studio and going to configure. So now we know that the steps run properly. Uh, Visual Builder Studio's build VM is able to start and stop the integration cloud instance. Uh, the next step is to look at scheduling. Uh, to do that, you go under settings and then you can go under triggers and select periodic trigger to schedule this job. Now, before we schedule this, there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. Um, and for that, we will refer to the official documentation for stopping and starting the Oracle Integration Cloud instance. Uh, one is that Oracle recommends that you do not stop production instances. Uh, the second is that you do not start and stop uh, the instance on a nightly basis. So um, this is meant mainly for your dev or test instances. When you're not using them, you can you know, turn them off um, to save some some cost there so uh, in this case for my example what I'm doing is in my uh, stop job I have the uh, periodic trigger uh, set for every Friday at 7 30 p.m. and my start job uh, is every Monday it starts the instance at 7 30 a.m. 
So you could do something similar where over the weekend, you know, no one's going to use the dev instances. Um, then you could schedule the job to stop the instance on Friday and then start the instance back on uh, on Monday. So I uh, hope uh, this architecture made sense. Um, and once again, this is just one of the ways that you can start and stop an integration cloud instance. Um, using Visual Builder Studio, you can schedule these build scripts so that they run uh, based on a schedule. Uh, integration Cloud can be start and stopped using the OCI REST APIs, um, where you would have to then write the logic to run based on a schedule. The cost for the VM is minimal because only when the scripts run is the time that the VM is up. Um, Visual Builder Studio then brings down the VM uh, after after a timeout. So this is a pretty cost-effective solution. I hope this helps. Thank you for watching.